Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. I am still T Maso at thewatchbox.com. It's still in the description below. It is still your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly. I am T Maso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a 2019 update of 2017's HYTH0. This is the HYTH1. One zero. Dimensionally, it's the same. There have been some refinements, including major upgrades to the case itself. But let's talk about how it fits. Well, technically a steel watch, you can see that about two thirds of the case is actually made of sapphire, including the parts that are most likely to contact a hard surface. So this is basically a sapphire case with a steel back. The watch is 48.8 millimeters in diameter, but don't be scared because it's lugless and it's round. So it's also 48.8 millimeters across the wrist. And while monstrously thick at 19.6, it's actually less than the 20.08 that HYT claimed. So, hey, under promising and over delivering. Well, here we go right here. Easy to wear, lugless. You can see it's a very thick watch. But on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, the logic of the H0 case is really borne out. Super easy to wear and nowhere near overlapping the edge of my wrist. This wears as easily as a 40 millimeter Rolex watch on a solid end link bracelet because a Daytona, current Daytona on a solid end link bracelet is 50.5 millimeters across the wrist. This is 48.8. Again, it is completely lugless. 14 centimeters circumference wrists could wear this, provided they're comfortable with the look. Now, the look includes an integrated proprietary rubber strap. You can see it has golf ball-like dimpling. You can see an echo of that on the crown as well. It's fairly thick, and it's held on using screws, so it's quite securely anchored, and it's substantially made. You can see this is a brand new HYT factory strap, and it's paired with HYT's single fold titanium deploying clasp. The case is steel, but the clasp is titanium. It is a trigger release, so you have to press the triggers. It doesn't just pop open. My favorite feature of this has always been the micro adjustment that's built in. You have a push button and then several natural anchoring points, so it's, it's incrementally adjustable, and you can actually fine tune it when it's on the wrist, which makes it even more useful close all this up. This is a very secure system. Again, you want a trigger actuated deployment. We've got a big and heavy watch and this qualifies. The case is pretty minimal. You could see that it features satin finish and then a polished lip and it flares to encircle the stem tube assembly, but that's pretty much it. The rest of the watch, including most of what you can see, is sapphire, which is incredibly hard. Nine on the Mohs scale can only be routinely scratched by diamonds, so very durable. And you can see outboard, we have this sort of vague numbering system in the profile of what appears to be a chapter ring that has been brushed by a cake decorator's icing comb. And that is the first thing that comes to mind here. You can see it also wraps up and over to parallel the contours of the sapphire itself. We do have little blue indices that are lacquer filled that are sitting on that circumferential ring. And I think the idea here is that you should be able to read it laterally. In fact, you can read it laterally because the meniscus between the two fluids is how you read the time. Now let's do a quick loom shot here because the watch probably has more than you expect. So you can see we have the hours and the minutes loomed. Now, if you look down here in the corner, you can see the meniscus and the completely green part is unfilled and the bluish green part is full of the liquid that indicates the hour. And so we have two immiscible liquids. They cannot mix. And the meniscus between them, the boundary, indicates the current hour. So you can see we have a separate display for the hours, the minutes, and then we also have running seconds up at the top, which means this is technically a regulator. We also have a power reserve indicator in the corner for the manual wind 65 hour power reserve. Now a change from the H0 is that here we have a screw down crown and the combination of the screw down crown and the 50 meter water resistance rating means that this is now a surface swimmable watch compared to the H0. So let's demonstrate how this works. We have a conventional Swiss lever manual wind movement. You can see it works just like a normal watch 
watch. It ticks, it talks, it's got a barrel, it's got a train, it's got an escapement, a balance, and a hairspring. But then it also has a cam system, which you can see through the skeletonization in the bridge, and these two metallic bellows, which are filled with the liquids. One clear, one blue. Now, naturally, we have this impossible jump from one hour to the next. So as we approach the end, and I'll demonstrate how this works, you can see how I'm adjusting the minutes. As we approach the end of the scale, you can see how we have five, then seven. So we're gonna go from five to six, and then six again. But we're gonna go over the top. That is, not only is it a regulator, but it is a retrograde. It has retrograde minutes that move with surprising speed. And the alacrity with which that meniscus travels is one of the great thrills of operating and observing this watch. So six is here, six is here, but here is seven. Five, seven, six, and six. So that's how that works. You can also see that the dial has changed considerably compared to the original H0. It's open. You can see a lot more of the underlying mechanism. We have these two flanking honeycomb segments. We have this sort of nickel anthracite space age tone that covers everything, whether it's polished, satinated, or media blasted. Everything but the splashes of blue are grayscale. You can see that power reserve indicator we've got over at the side. It is a manual one power reserve. It is a 60 five hour power reserve. All this has a four hertz beat rate, 35 joules. It's got a full balance bridge for stability against shock. The movement was designed for HYT by Chronode, which is well known for developing high-end movements for other brands and actually designed and built one of the entries in the Harry Winston Opus series, so impressive stuff. You can see that we have media blast across the bridges as well as on the base plate, but all the screw heads are black polished. We have solarization on the barrel cap and then if you look, we actually have credible mirrored anglage on the edge of these bridges. So it's still very much a traditional Swiss watch. It just has this very untraditional fluidic display system, which was developed by HYT's sister company, Pressiflex, whose primary business appears to be medical device manufacture. Now, HYT is very much in business and trading, and during the period when they were bankrupt, Pressiflex was providing parts and service, so you're well supported when you buy one of these watches. That said, pre-owned makes the most sense, which is why this is where I shop for my watches. And of course, with HYT, you have sort of a modern-day Clepsydra, a truly original, non-derivative concept for telling time based on the use of fluid. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.